What's going on? Welcome to the 2021 edition of the Off the Schneid preview series, where I'll be going over all 32 NFL teams, breaking down their roster, schedule, giving you a record prediction, as well as helping out with some betting tips. If this is your first time on the channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you like what you hear, go ahead and smash that like button as well. Don't forget to check the description for links for the Off the Schneid social media and interact with me directly. I want to give a massive shout out to our lad scouting services and our lads.com as all roster and depth chart graphics are straight off their site if you've never been go check them out immediately i use their site for all nfl fantasy and betting purposes and there's a link in the description for their site again do me a huge favor and hit that like and subscribe button but enough of that let's get to your favorite nfl football preview Taking a look at the Houston Texans, we will start at quarterback, I guess. Um, obviously, this whole the whole thesis, the whole video revolves around Deshaun Watson and whether or not he's going to be on this team and whether or not he's going to be playing. So, um, legal troubles aside, is the NFL going to suspend Deshaun Watson for X amount of time? I don't know. Is this legal issue going to go into the season? He seems to, you know, it seems to be that he thinks he's completely innocent in the situation. I'm not sure. I'm not here to speculate on that if I'm being honest with you guys. You know, I'm not going to say he's he's guilty, he's innocent, he deserves a play, he doesn't, whatever, whatever. Whatever's going to happen will happen. All I know is where there's smoke, there's fire. So something happened. I don't, yeah. That's that. Something happened. I don't know what. The only people that realistically know what are Deshaun Watson and the girls that are accusing him. Those are the only people that actually know what happened. So I'm not I'm not going to speculate like I know anything because I certainly don't. And I don't think anyone else does realistically. So we'll see. We'll see what happens if. Uh, yeah, we'll just see what happens, basically. But no other team in the NFL, I don't I don't think. And in my opinion, I don't think there's any other team in the NFL where their success entirely hinges on whether or not their quarterback is playing. I, th you know, obviously every other NFL team would take a, a step back and take a huge hit if their starter starting quarterback were to get hurt or suspended, whatever. I don't think there's any other team like the Texans that completely rely on, you know, their quarterback. Um, this is actually not a horrible team, in my opinion, with Deshaun Watson without they're god awful and probably the worst team in the league. So um, it's going to be an interesting one. They obviously brought in Tyrod Taylor and Jeff Driscoll and drafted uh, Davis Mills in the third round. He was their first selection in the 2021 NFL draft. So we'll see. Realistically, I, I entirely expect if if you want predictions and what I expect to happen, I don't I don't know what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson, but I don't particularly believe that he plays for this team again. Um, I just think too much has happened. He already wanted out along with the legal issues. Just just get wash your hands with the situation. That's what I would do as a as a Texans, you know, front office. And they just turned over the whole uh, general manager, coaching staff, everything. Obviously, Bill O'Brien is finally gone. So Texans fans are, you know, clear from the clutches of Bill O'Brien, which is, you know, very, 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 very welcome, I think, in everybody's opinion. But um, I expect Tyrod Taylor to start the season. I expect Davis Mills to finish the season. I think that you got to give the kid a shot at some point throughout. Um, it's just a matter of how long, how bad are you going to be. Um, and then you got to give him at least a shot to see if he is or can be that guy and decide whether you not whether or not you need to draft a quarterback next year. I think they I think they definitely will if they're going to end up where I project that they will. Um chances are pretty high unless there's you know not some high uh high end quarterback talent in next year's draft. I haven't looked hard enough if I'm being honest with you to to see what talent is out there besides like Spencer Rattler, Aaron Howell, stuff like that, but either way they need to decide whether or not they're drafting a quarterback. So we'll see. I expect Davis Mills to get a shot. Uh, move to the running back position. David Johnson's still there. Obviously, one of the worst trades I've probably ever seen. But either way, David Johnson is still there. They bring in Mark Ingram, Philip Lindsay, Rex Burkhead. Yeah, they're just going to... I don't know. I don't know if they're... Realistically, like... I don't know why they're bringing in these guys. I don't fully expect them to be a, a super running team like I do with 
like a running bad team like I do with the Detroit Lions. I think the Detroit Lions are going to be a bad team. I don't think they win a ton of games, but I think they run the ball a lot and they do it with some success. I don't really see that for the Texans. Um, what I see here is similar to what the um, Las Vegas Raiders did and just brought in, you know, obviously they only brought in Kenyon Drake, but, you know, they bring in a guy and they hope that their running backs can make the running game better. It doesn't really work like that in the NFL for me. You need an offensive line that's very quality, very stout, like the Detroit Lions, and they just don't particularly have that here in Houston. So, I don't know. David Johnson's a starter. I like Philip Lindsay a lot. Um, Mark Ingram is getting to the end of his career a little bit, uh, and Rex Burkhead as well. So, I think realistically it's going to be David Johnson and Philip Lindsay as the, the guys kind of a thing. Uh, we'll move over to the tight end position, I guess. We got Jordan Aiken there, Aikens, sorry, that I do like. Um, but, you know, I like him with Deshaun Watson. I'm not sure, you know, I know that uh, Tyrod Taylor has shown a propensity to throw to tight ends a little bit. So we'll see if that, you know, equals some fantasy value for for uh, Jordan Aikens and he maybe becomes the, you know, second target for Tyrod Taylor while he's the quarterback. Uh, Farrell Brown comes in. He's a good quality depth guy. Kahele Waring, they drafted him in the third round a couple years ago. He's still there, but, you know, he's kind of a depth guy. Brevin Jordan, they drafted in the fifth round this year. Don't mind that, but again, more of a depth guy. They do run a fair amount of two tight end sets, and I think that they will more this this year with their, you know, offensive line, and they're just, they're going to have some issues, I feel like. Um so we'll move to the wide receivers before the offensive line. They brought in Chris Moore, Chris Connolly, Alex Erickson, uh, Andre Roberts, even Dante Moncrief is still on a roster. So and drafted Nico Collins in the third round, who is, in my opinion, their their best draft pick by uh, a fair margin, unless Davis Mills becomes their franchise quarterback kind of a thing. Brandon Cooks can still very much get it done. Um, super underrated still, but again, you know, without Deshaun Watson, I don't really know how this is going to look. Um, Brandon Cobb, I don't mind, and I don't mind him with Tyrod Taylor, um, but I like him more <laughs> with Deshaun Watson. Same thing with Nico Collins. You know, if if Deshaun Watson were starting, I would look at Nico Collins like I looked at uh, um, Chase Chase Claypool last year. That's kind of how I was looking at him with Deshaun Watson as the quarterback with Tyrod Taylor and Davis Mills. I don't hold him in that high a regard. So we'll see. But long term, I do like Nico Collins a lot. And realistically, if they could have. Uh, Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins, you know, basically be their guys for the future. I don't know if Brandon Cobb's going to be there for too much longer, but that's a pretty good start. That's a pretty good start. And that's, you know, the silver lining for this team is going to be that they're <laughs> that they're trying. So I know that's kind of funny, but like, you know, that's that's the silver lining is they're trying their best. And, and the GM, you know, head coach, everyone's going to try their best to, you know, do what they can and earn a roster spot for next year. Whether or not Deshaun Watson's around, I'm not sure. But that's kind of what it what it is for me. Um, Kiki Cutie still there. Isaiah Coulter didn't really play last year as a fifth round pick, even when they were super wide receiver needy. He didn't even really play, which was crazy to me. And I don't know, I don't see, I, I see that probably continuing, you know, bringing in Chris Moore, Chris Connolly, some solid vets, and, you know, drafting the guy in the third round, Andre Roberts. I don't see Coulter getting a ton of playing time this year, to be honest. So that was a weird draft pick. I didn't mind it, and I still don't mind it if he gets a shot to play, but we'll see. Um, move to the offensive line now. Uh, it's, besides Laramie Tunsil, they're not in a great spot, but they've they've done what they can, you know, to bring in NFL players to fill holes to try to compete as best they can. You know, that's literally what it is. Titus Howard and Max Sharping, absolutely, it would be fantastic if those two guys could take the next step this year. The first and second round pick in 2019 for this team, they absolutely have to take that step and be, you know, mainstays 
on this offensive line. They have to do it. If not, it's going to be a very, very rough time. Um, Charlie Heck, a fourth round pick last year. He's not, I, I don't mind him. He's got to get a shot and he might get that shot if, you know, Titus Howard doesn't work out. Marcus Cannon's there as a solid vet, you know, moving him inside. He used to, he can play right tackle. Um, Justin Britt, but he didn't play last year from what I recall. And uh, he's getting older. I'm not super, you know, I'm not jumping up and down about Justin Britt. Justin McCray, they brought in him again. I'm not super excited about that. Roderick Johnson, I don't mind that pickup. Um, you know, he's a solid NFL player as well. He might be able to move over and play some right tackle, but you know, that's basically like the, the crappy thing about being a Texans fan is like, they're doing their best to, to compete and, uh, you know, they're going to get a participation ribbon this year, realistically, unless Deshaun Watson plays that's, that's what it is. So, um, Tim Kelly's the new, sorry, I shouldn't say new. He he was the offensive coordinator before, but it was realistically Bill O'Brien. Now he becomes the offensive coordinator, but I still think this is going to be David Kelly's offense anyways, who is the new head coach. And it's really a strange situation. David Kelly, I think, is 65 years old. Lovey Smith, very old school, 62 years old. And then Tim Kelly is younger than me. He's 34. So that's pretty... That's an extreme difference, you know, in that coaching room, in the coaching staff kind of a thing, and very different ideologies, in my opinion. We'll see how it works out. Um, so we move over to Lovey Smith's defense, and I really don't know how this is going to work with Lovey Smith coming in. You know, he's he, he, he loves to run a Tampa 2, which is usually four, four linemen trying to get after the quarterback, and there's not a ton of blitzing. A lot of coverage. I just, you know, they go from a 3-4 to that. You know, I just don't particularly see this working out. Not that I don't mind the pieces and some of the pieces that they have on defense. I just honestly feel like Lovey Smith needs to, you know, he needs to adapt a little bit more if he wants to be successful as, an, as a defensive coordinator in the NFL, that's just how I see it. Maybe I'm going to be completely wrong, and maybe Texans fans are going to hate me for saying that, but that's just how I see it. They do have some good pieces, like I said. Um, Charles Omwenu, I like that a lot. He was a steal in the fifth round. I think he could take a he could take a big step forward this year. I think that you know he's a piece for the future. I definitely really like him. Uh, Ross Blacklock was the only thing that kept me from giving this team an F grade in two years ago. You know. Two year, two drafts ago, right? Um, he was terrible <laughs> last year. He was really not very good. He absolutely has to be better this year. I'm not saying he has to be some sort of world beater, Pro Bowl, or anything like that, but he has to be better. Um, Malik Collins comes in. I like Malik Collins. Demarcus Walker, I don't mind at all. He comes in from the Denver Broncos. Uh, Whitney Merciless is still there. Jordan Jenkins comes in. Neville Hewitt comes in. Zach Cunningham was very good last year. Very, very good. And he's going to need to be just as good this year. Um, Camus Gregor Hill comes in. Kevin Pierre Lewis comes in. Christian Kirksey comes in. Joe Thomas comes in. They just brought in anyone and everyone realistically that you know is kind of after a job in the nfl right it, uh, you know if you're an experienced veteran nfl player come to houston and you can play on defense for sure um shaq lawson's there i, I was a huge fan of shaq lawson coming out of the draft he didn't really take that step realistically and, uh, you know, this is going to be a big year for him. He could, it, you know, if this defense is going to work for Lovey Smith, Shaq Lawson needs to be huge for this team. You know, Whitney Merciless can play that role. Shaq Lawson can play that role. Charles Mwenu can play that role. Malik Collins, Blacklock, they can make it work. I'm just not so sure that it does. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, move back to the secondary. Uh, Vernon Hargraves is there, you know, a guy that uh, a former first round pick that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers kind of gave up on. I don't mind taking a shot on a guy like that. Terrence, Terrence Mitchell comes in. Don't mind him as a depth guy. Bradley Roby can still get the job done. I don't mind him. Uh, Desmond King, the second he comes in. I don't mind him. They paid a bunch of money to Eric Murray. He's got to earn that money. Um, Lonnie Johnson, Justin Reed, you know, 
Sure. These, it's all right. This defense is all right. Like I said, they've done the best they can. Considering no free agent wants to come to Houston. No free agent would want to come here. I think it might get more attractive now that Bill O'Brien's gone and if they can get some pieces put together. Um, but realistically, this is a, a dumpster fire. This is the NFL's dumpster fire. That's not how you want to build your team. And they've had to because Bill O'Brien trades all their draft picks away. Um, they, they've been just trying to build this team back up through free agency and it's, it's not going to work long term. I, I don't think, um, but we'll see realistically, they're going to need a, a good draft next year. Maybe that's, you know, first overall, maybe that's for a quarterback. We'll see what happens, but let's take a look at what I project them to do record wise in 2021. One win. That's what I'm projecting for the Houston Texans. If, if Deshaun Watson isn't playing for this team, they're not going to win a ton of ball games. Realistically, like I have, the, obviously you can see it on the high side, four wins. And, you know, that would take a bit of a miracle, if I'm being honest with you. Um, if Deshaun Watson is on this team for, you know, half the season, whatever, then you can kind of throw this out the window and it doesn't really, you know, have too much effect on how this team is actually going to look and run and win and lose, that kind of thing. Um, I just don't expect him to be on this team, even if he does play in the NFL. I don't, Again, I don't particularly see him playing in the NFL at all this year, just considering this whole situation. Um, but if he does, I honestly don't even think it'll be for the Houston Texans. So we'll see. But, you know, there is a potential that they don't win a single ball game this year. There, there really is. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole schedule. I'm going to make this pretty short and sweet considering. I mean, you want me to just to say they're going to lose every single game? Because that I can do that. Um, I just uh, let's talk about the games that they can p potentially win. Week one against Jacksonville at home. That's a potential game. They, they're going to have a shot. You know, if they can control the clock, you know, play it like a playoff game. Every game they're going to have to play like a playoff game, but the winnable games especially. Just control the clock. That is essentially every, you know, game is, I'm not going to say it's their Super Bowl, but it kind of is. You know, like they're not going to win. They're not going to win very many games. <laughs> that's just a fact so week one against jacksonville at home fans in the stands though at least that game will be packed it'll, it'll probably be sold out every game regardless because it's football but um that's potentially a winnable game with a rookie quarterback in his first game i don't think they win that game if i'm being honest but that's a game that's a possibility to win there you go um week three against carolina again at home still don't like them uh to win but it is a short week short week at home you know another you know quarterback that we're not really sure what's going on there they're not the best team in the league they're also not the worst again i don't expect i give them a better shot to beat jacksonville than i do against carolina if i'm being honest but it's possible it's possible you know a possible win there um uh, none till they're by <laughs> by week 10 sure whatever it doesn't matter when their bye week is with this team they're not going to do anything uh week 12 against the new york jets that's a game that has potential you know again another rookie quarterback it's at home you got a shot to win that game um i give them that's probably the game i give them the best chance at winning is against the new york jets at home in week 12 after their bye, after they get, you know, pumped by the by the Tennessee Titans on the road, they come home, maybe can squeak out a win against the New York Jets. You know, that's their best shot. And realistically, that's it. I mean, you know, maybe you could say the Jags on the road, I suppose, but realistically, that's it. Three games kind of tops. I think I was being super generous with the 4-13, and 13, if I'm being honest. And, you know, if you're the Texans, you just want to lose every game. Like, it really doesn't matter. Like, be the be first overall. Tank for Rattler, whoever's going to be first overall. You know what I mean? Like, you got to do it. This is a bad team. So, it is what it is. I'm sorry to Texans fans, but, you know, Bill O'Brien put you guys in this position. Uh, and potentially, you could say Deshaun Watson as well. But here we are um, with Deshaun Watson. This is potentially, you know, I'm, I don't know about a playoff team, but pushing it they would definitely they would definitely contend 
Like Deshaun Watson is that good that they would definitely contend for the playoffs if he were in the lineup. Um, but there it is. So short and sweet. Let me know what you think in the comments. But there is your team breakdown, roster, and record prediction for the 2021 Houston Texans.